What's up you guys? Hey, thank you for watching this video. In this video I want to talk about med school loans because a lot of people have been asking me, hey, uh, I know you were a Caribbean student or IMG, uh, how did you get a loan? What did you do? How much is it? All that good stuff. And since I'm a big mouth, I don't mind telling people how much you know my school was. I don't know why everybody talks about, like nobody wants to talk about how much money they make or how much debt they have and like everybody's lying all the time i know you know most people don't have that much money or we you know don't make that much money most people are in a lot of debt that's pretty common um but nobody wants to talk about it they feel embarrassed you don't have to be embarrassed like you should just figure out how to get out of it <laughs> no but it, that's good though i don't know if you guys know this right you listen to a lot of these financial guys they get billions of dollars of debt so they use somebody else's money to make more money or to buy you know uh, assets and stuff like that so essentially that's what you're doing you're using somebody else's money to buy an asset which is this education and the education they can never take away from you that's awesome right it's because like if you default on a loan uh, for say a restaurant they can take that restaurant away they can take all the assets in the restaurant they'll take the stove and the freaking whatever plates or I don't know but they can never ever take away your education. It's all right here. There's no way to extract that. So, not that I'm saying that you need a default on the on the <laughs> loan, but you know, like that's something to think about. You can never that can never be taken away. So, it's kind of an interesting thought. So, uh, I went to uh, St. Matthews uh, in the Caribbean. A lot of you guys know that. And I wasn't real smart about it. I just picked one school. I applied there. I didn't get into U.S. school, so I just went ahead and went to that one. Um, I applied. They they kind of have you know they tell you where to apply to get a loan. I applied in uh, to uh, Key Bank, which was I don't even know if Key Bank's around anymore. I, I it's it went to another company at this point. But um, so at the time, Key Bank had this. A loan called the Med Achiever, which was for medical students. Um, the thing about going to a Caribbean school, though, is you can't get federal money. Okay, so a lot of the U.S. students will get a federal loan, and that the interest rates are super, super low, like one percent. Although the interest rates, I think, are pretty low right now, anyway. But unfortunately, you can't do that because you're going outside the United States. Even though if you're a U.S. citizen, they're not going to give you uh, federal money to go to a Caribbean school. So. What you will have to do is get a private bank loan. But a lot of the big banks do have these uh, loans out there that are geared towards medical students. They would, of course, like to have U.S. students in these loans, but the U.S. students can get like lower rates usually with uh, the federal stuff. So they generally try and do that. And then, of course, you should also look in your state to see if there's some kind of a you know grant or something like that. It's unlikely that your state is going to give you money to go to a Caribbean school because there's a higher percentage of dropouts from a Caribbean school than as opposed to a U.S. school. So that's like, you know, the banks are, they want sure things. And so the, you, the Caribbean students are not like a sure thing, you know. You should bet on yourself though because that's the only sure thing that you can really count on is if, when you count on yourself. So that's what I did. I bet on myself. I said, I'll take the money because I know what I'm making back. So I got the Med Achiever loan, which was, the rates are not bad. They're like, um, like 4%, maybe like 3% on some of them. And every semester they would give you money. So I would apply for, uh, I'm sorry, like maybe every year. So I would apply for, I think it was about 30,000 per semester. That included tuition and the money for me to live on. So 60,000 a year times four, that's 240,000. And then, you know, interest on top of that. So that was what about cost. I came out with about, I think it was 300,000 in loans because during that time in residency, you're not making that much money. You make, you know, in residency, I think we started out with maybe like 38,000 a year. I ended up, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but it's around there. And I ended up at, you get increased pay every year, but it's not much. And you end up with maybe 50,000 per year at the end of your fifth year, whatever. You have, you know, living expenses and you just want to like, 
not be in poverty. So the choices are to start paying your loan back or to defer the loan for until you're out of residency. I chose to defer the loan and I'm not sure that was a great idea, honestly, because that interest is accumulating. All, it's gonna accumulate anyway, right? But if you're paying zero on it, then you're gonna accumulate more. I decided like I was gonna just suck it up when I was done and I was gonna make so much money that I was be able to uh, pay it back really easy. Well, that's not quite the case. Uh, maybe some specialties are, but for me, you know, we're making good money, but like not, you're, you're not gonna pay the whole thing off in one year type of thing. What I would recommend to a US citizen going to a Caribbean school, there's a hitchhiker right there, that's kind of weird. Anyway, uh, you can see that much around here. In Wyoming, you see it everywhere. Everyone's like super nice. In the city, look okay. bad. So what I would recommend to a US citizen going to a Caribbean school is shop around for these Medachiever, well, you know, mine was called Medachiever, but it's like essentially a medical school loan from a private bank. So try and look at the big banks. And honestly, I don't, I have not looked at this in like 10 plus years to see where, like who's giving good rates right now and stuff, but you're just, I mean, it's gonna change year to year. So if you're seeing this video in five years, like it doesn't matter. It's just, it's the same thing. You just go shop around to the big banks, find out, you know, you can ask the schools like what they recommend, of course. And then I would take that recommendation and then find your own and see if you can get the lowest rate possible. So if you're getting like less than 3% interest on your loan, like it doesn't really matter. Like that's almost nothing. It's super cheap to borrow that money. So just go ahead and do it. Uh, what I would not recommend is what one of my friends did is take the money and like put it in the stock market and like save a whole bunch of money, uh, you know, go like super thin on your living expensive and then, uh, expenses and then put it in the stock market and then lose the money. <laughs> Don't do that because one of my friends did that. And so he's, yeah, that's a, that's a big problem. And then you don't have a way to pay that back. Oh, uh, specialties after. Okay, so this is like maybe another talk, but I want to touch on this. But the money in medicine, okay? So a lot of people don't think about this and they go and they're like, oh, I want to be a pediatrician or they go to med school and they're like, I don't know what I want to, what I want to be. And they take out a $300,000 loan and then they're like, oh shit, I really like pediatrics. But pediatrics averages like 80,000 a year. So uh, how are you gonna pay that loan back when you need like a, you have a family, you have a house, you have all this, these expenses and then you, on top of that, you're paying $2,500 a month for this, uh, for this loan and then it's like a 30 year deal, you know? So that is, not everybody really thinks about that before. Like you just, you go into it, you're like, oh, I wanna help people, I wanna save the world, all this bullshit. And then you realize, oh, f it's just a job, you know, I mean, it's not just a job, it's really, medicine is not just a job. It, for most people, it's really a calling, it's a career, it's definitely a career. You can't just like go in and out of medicine super easy, so it's not like that. But it's definitely a business transaction. Do not get fooled on that. And if you don't make the right decisions on this business transaction, you'll get hosed just like the stock market. You know, you put some money in there and then stock dumps and then you're, you're effed and this medicine is the same way you put that money in and if you on the other end you come out and you are not making enough money like you're screwed there's no there's it's a you have to be very creative in order to get that money back so just think about that uh, before I did not really think about it that much before I, I just thought you know like my family was not in medicine they were all like oh my god you're gonna make so much money it's a doctor it's gonna be ridiculous you'll be able to pay anything back blah 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 buy a mansion and all this stuff and it's really not like that like like that's what you know because i finished when i'm 35 and like you know by this time like you're waiting a long time most football players are retired by then and they've already made like 25 million dollars you know that's that's the kind of money like that maybe you can do that with and so don't get too fooled. Medicine is good. You can make good money, but you most people are not making deals that are 12 million a year for three years kind of thing. So it's just not like that. But so if you want to do well, I mean, really look into this before. Look at the salaries of all the things that you're interested in. And you know, it, it sounds bad to say this, but don't just pick one because 
you could get into it or it's pretty good or you want to save the world because you're not going to save the world if you're in debt and you're struggling and you can't pay for your rent like it's just not going to happen you know you have to take care of yourself first and then other people later but once you do that you can go out there and establish nonprofits and like help people you could do big things but you really have to take care of yourself uh, my grandmother she's a uh, She's uh, 92. She always tells me, charity starts at home. <laughs> Don't forget, you know? And she, all of my, uh, the other awesome quote from her is, uh, money's not everything, but you can't do a goddamn thing without it. That's what she, she always tells me all the time. She's 92. It's awesome. So that's kind of uh, major things I want to touch on in this video. Medicine is, you know, great, but it is also a business. And it's also your business, and it's also your money, and the banks and shit, they'll take your money, believe me, they don't care. And they'll try everything they can to get it back with interest. And, you know, they don't care if they'll, they don't care if they have to bankrupt you or like take your house or whatever. They don't give a shit. They just want your money. So if you're interested in doing well with medicine, you really need to go into a specialty. You need to find one of the surgical specialties. And honestly, I went into general surgery and it's okay, but it's not like fantastic. Unfortunately, you probably have to do a fellowship to do really well. And, and even some of my cardiothoracic uh, surgeons, surgery friends, are, it's tough to find a job in cardiothoracic surgery, which is kind of fucked up too. You right? You like you go to, you do general surgery for five years. One of my friends did a two-year cardiothoracic uh, fellowship, and then he did a one-year cardiac transplant fellowship. Like, and he, so he's now eight years into residency, and then he had to take a job where he was doing his fellowship because he couldn't get a job anywhere because the cardiothoracic surgeons are just have a, a, a smaller pool of, of jobs. Um, so that's very important. And you just want to make sure that, you know, it's like addition, subtraction. It's super easy. Like you're going to spend 300 grand on your education, like on average, I think maybe it's more now, but, um, and then when you come out that you know, payment is gonna be how much? It's gonna be 2,500 a month, it's gonna be 3,000 a month. How are you gonna pay that back? What are the specialties that are gonna be able to pay that back and still have a good lifestyle and be able to help other people too? You want, like, that's one of the things you wanna do, right? Just make sure that all those things add up before you pick your specialty or maybe even before you go into medicine. If you're, like, hot on pediatrics right now, honestly, I would never go into pediatrics. Like, you're a fool, unless you're gonna get your med school for free. Like you should not go into pediatrics. It's not a bad specialty, but they're just not getting paid. Like that's just stupid. In family medicine, the same. Like you really have to have a good plan. Unless you have like a business plan with you have all these partners, they're gonna take you in and pay for all your med school or you have a grant or something like that. It's just not a good business deal. And you're gonna be, you know, like pissed off at that you went into pediatrics like your entire life if you can't ever pay that back. So business of medicine, it's a great field. It's you know, you can really help a lot of people. You can do something that you feel good about, but do not overlook the business aspect and the financial aspect. Otherwise, you're gonna be really miserable. And honestly, a lot of these old bastards, they're pissed off right now because they were making a shitload of money before and and all the reimbursements went down and they're so pissed off. Like, they can't even function during the day. Like, they're pissed off at every single person, every interaction because they're not making as much money as they used to. That's the truth. I always tell the truth, you know that shit. All right, you guys, hey, thanks for watching this video. If you like these videos, you want more of them, subscribe to my channel, that'd be good. Share them with a friend maybe, like the video, that'd be great. And I'll see you in the next one.